galaxies. By far one of the most beautiful and awe-inspiring structures in the visible universe, their formation is still a bit of a mystery as are most things out there. They are magnificent on their own, however today I'm going to talk about something even cooler than just galaxies, I'm going to talk about colliding galaxies. Yes, galaxies collide, our own Milky Way galaxy is on a collision course with our nearest galaxy Andromeda at a rate of about 300 kilometers per second. That may sound fast, but Andromeda is around two and a half million light years away, which means that our galaxies will merge in approximately four billion years. Either that or the Milky Way is drifting towards a giant mirror. You might be wondering how we can tell we are even on a collision course. It's due to the fact that when we observe Andromeda with some very sensitive telescopes, we can detect that the galaxy looks slightly more blue than it should, a phenomenon called blue shift. In sharp contrast with this, most galaxies are moving away from us due to the expansion of the universe, and so they are what we call red shifted. A good analogy is called Doppler shift, which you should Google if you don't know what it is, and it explains why the sound of a car engine seems to drop in pitch as it passes you. The same basic principle is valid for light waves. It's okay though if you're unfamiliar with this idea, it's not really important for the rest of what I'll be talking about. In timescales comparable to the age of the universe, galaxies do indeed collide all the time. In fact, about 50% of all galactic disks are warped due to collisions and near misses with other galaxies. Although contrary to what you may think, it is very unlikely that the stars themselves would actually collide with each other. This is because there is so much space between the stars. Think about trying to hit a grain of sand from a kilometer away with another grain of sand. The stars still interact through gravity and turn the extraordinary disks of the galaxies into some breathtaking structures. For example, as smaller galaxies orbit larger ones, their gas is stripped away by the bigger galaxy in a large stream of gas and dust which takes millions of years. We see this type of galactic stripping as the surrounding Magellanic clouds or dwarf galaxies are stripped by the Milky Way. Most of the galactic gas is actually in the space between galaxies, however. There is so much of it that it outweighs the collective mass of all the stars in the surrounding galaxies themselves. In large galactic clusters, galaxies are much closer together, which means there are more collisions. The first thing to understand about colliding galaxies ties in with star formation. Broadly speaking, large clouds of hydrogen gas tend not to want to collapse into stars on their own because they can be kind of warm, which tends to keep everything apart. When you heat a gas, we all know that it wants to expand. So star formation, a lot of the time, requires a trigger. The gas cloud that formed our solar system, for example, was triggered to collapse by a nearby supernova. We can tell this because we find very particular ratios of radioactive isotopes in meteorites that could have only come about as a result of a star going supernova right around the time our sun was born. Now, when galaxies collide, gas and stars mix up and trigger the collapse of massive regions of gas and dust. And this means that galaxy collisions are followed shortly by vast numbers of brand new stars being born. The number of fresh stars in a galaxy can tell us how long ago a collision occurred and is how we can tell that galaxies in clusters undergo more collisions. But this age of new stars is short lived because remember, Stars are massive nuclear furnaces that blast out intense stellar wind. So in large clusters of galaxies, where collisions are occurring more regularly, the stellar wind from all the new stars strips the galaxies in the cluster of so much gas that the space between the galaxies 
contains more mass than the galaxies themselves. We can see this intergalactic gas because it emits X-rays that we can pick up on Earth. Galactic goop. It is more of a way of thinking than an actual substance. Let me explain. Imagine a field of stationary stars and gas clouds that are evenly dispersed in three dimensions, in all directions I mean, from here to infinity, so that there are no regions where there is a higher concentration or a lesser concentration of stuff. It's just an even spread from here to infinity. If a star were to pass through all of this, the nearest stars and gas would be drawn towards and in behind the moving star due to gravity. This creates a kind of gravitational drag, which I think of as like trying to move through some sort of invisible galactic goop. The actual term for this process is called dynamical friction, but don't worry too much about the name, just focus on visualizing the idea. You see, the star only has so much energy of motion as it interacts with the surrounding stuff through gravity. It passes that energy onto things it interacts with and vice versa. And this is the basic mechanic of colliding galaxies. You could then see how a field of gas and dust that is more dense would act more strongly on the moving star. Now, what is spectacular about it is that in an actual galactic collision, the stars are moving towards each other at hundreds or thousands of kilometers per second. So when the very dense central regions of the galaxies interact in this way, stars transfer truly enormous kinetic energy to each other in a very short space of time, and billions of stars get slingshotted into intergalactic space at terrifying speed. The only wish you should place on these shooting stars is to wish you should never encounter one because they are hooking. This process doesn't just produce gigantic flaming balls of nuclear fusion tearing menacingly across the universe though. Many stars stay within the vicinity and collectively form some of the most beautiful arrangements of stars you will ever see. Combine that with all of the new star formation and you have something truly breathtaking to behold. Now here is something that is rather odd, very unexpected. How can it be that two of the largest structures in the universe can pass right through each other and not even flinch? Just hearing the term colliding galaxies has enough impact to make you want to hold on to something to steady yourself. Well, maybe not, but it's still pretty far out there. To help visualize this, here is a thought experiment I'm sure you are familiar with. Take a bowling ball and place it on a trampoline. Now roll a ping pong ball slowly along the surface of the trampoline so that it passes near the bowling ball. We see that the ping pong ball is dramatically deflected and its path curves around the dent created by the bowling ball. 
Now, if we repeat the process, only this time, the ping pong ball is traveling much, much faster. The path of the ping pong ball is barely altered. You would see that the faster it moves, the less its course changes. The reason is because the faster the ping pong ball is moving, the less time it has to interact with the curved trampoline surface, which in this analogy really means space-time. So the effect is reduced if they're traveling very, very quickly. When galaxies collide, the same is true for the stars. A remarkable consequence of this time-dependent type of a relationship means that if the stars in the galaxies are moving fast enough, they barely even notice each other. It sounds completely counterintuitive at first, but that's what we see when we look out into the universe. Galaxy collisions take place over millions of years, and the result is often one large spherical galaxy with not many new stars. In our short lifetime, we normally wouldn't get to appreciate the spectacular beauty of it all. But you know what is awesome? Universe Sandbox 2, which allows you to collide your own galaxies in these beautiful simulations. <laughs>